Good morning, Andrew. I am very well, thank you. Excellent, great. I, I'd love to hear now a little bit more about COG. So uh, over to you. Thanks very much, Andrew, and <clears throat> thank you everyone for joining us today. Um, so my name is Sean O'Keefe. I'm the CEO and founder of COGS, uh, the marketplace for trading surplus produce in the food industry. And what, what we do at COGS is we, we help farmers prevent images like the one you can see on, on screen here, where this farmer's uh, carrot and some parsnip crop is, is unfortunately going to end up in landfill because he's unable to, to sell that crop. And this is a this is a huge problem where about a third of, of all produce grown it never actually leaves the farm. And this can be for a variety of reasons, such as it just doesn't look the right way. It's uh, it's they've overgrown to kind of compensate for the kind of the, their primary buyer, such as a supermarket, or it's just simply the wrong shape or size for, for the market that they're they're selling it into. And this food waste leaves a huge environmental impact as well, where there's there's vast, vast amounts of greenhouse gas that are released from this this food waste, never mind the, the sheer amount and the volume of water and fertilizer and things that are used to grow this produce that is, is ultimately never eaten. And this is a, a huge market opportunity um, with over 100 million tonnes of edible but unused uh, produce grown each year. This represents a total addressable market of over 10 billion pounds in Europe. This isn't just a problem on the grower side um, for the farmers and the growers. This is also a problem on the buyer side where it's very difficult for the buyers to identify and discover that produce at the right time when the farmer has it available. And this is partly because this, this sector of the industry really relies on legacy relationships and paper based pro, uh, processes. And it's a very fragmented structure when you're dealing with perishable produce, you really need to have the speed and the, the matching ability to, with the supply and the demand to enable a, a, a successful transaction. And that's where we come in, where the COGS online platform is a B2B marketplace where these food processors can buy produce directly from farmers. So they can buy that surplus produce rather than it end up in landfill. Using our technology, they can save time, increase profitability and prevent food waste. So how does this work in practice? A farmer, for example, or a grower who, say an apple grower, um, if they had produce they were unable to sell, they could list that on the COGS platform and sell that directly to a food processor. And that would be someone who might buy this apple and then juice it and sell it on his apple juice or slice it or maybe make it into apple pie filling. And this has a huge financial benefit for both parties. Farmers see an increase of revenue through the platform of up to 10% and profit of up to 30%. And processors also see a saving of up to 50% on the produce they're purchasing. This using the COGS platform is easier, it's faster, and it ultimately creates a much more sustainable food supply chain. As to the product, we have a fully transactional MVP. And what this means is for a farmer, they just come on the platform, they list the produce they have available, and then that gets matched up with a, a buyer. So for example, our carrot buyer who we saw, saw it on the first slide, he could list those carrots on the platform, and then they would be matched with a food processor or manufacturer who uses carrots as a key input. Then they can chat directly on the platform and the purchase can be made safely and securely in a matter of minutes. The team, myself, Sean O'Keefe, uh, I have started my own company before. I have I've been the first employee at uh, different tech startups, all in different sectors, but always in commercial and marketing roles. And my family has a farming background, which gives me the real passion for this industry. My co-founder is Martin Tilbury, who is COO and CTO. He is a grocery expert who was most recently the head of analytics at Sainsbury's supermarket. And he has also built his own uh, tech startup in the past. We are joined by Liv Cunningham, who was previously at the government's food waste initiative and has previously been at a series B agrotech startup. And we're supported from ad by advisors from the fresh produce industry, giving us real expertise and experience and the know-how and contacts that we need to, to grow and develop the market. In the last year, um, with no paid advertising, we've successfully launched our MVP. We've diversified from our initial testing, which was done within, with apples, into all, all types of fruit and vegetables. We're now working with over 150 businesses within the UK, um, and we have launched a really, really exciting partnership with Marks & Spencers, where we're working with M&S Food to release £20 million of cost saving within their supply chain. And that's to help them make their, their supply chain more circular so they can reduce waste and reduce costs within their supply chain. And we're also in initial discussions with Sainsbury supermarkets at the moment. The impact we look at is, is threefold. We look at the produce saved, the water we can conserve, and the CO2 we can conserve. In the last year, we've conserved, uh, we've 
we've sold 70,000 kilos of surplus produce back into the food supply chain. And in the next two years, we have a target of 25 million kilograms of surplus produce. We've conserved 50 million litres of water, 20,000 kilos of CO2. And in the next two years, we're looking to target 20 billion litres of water conserved and 9 million kilograms of CO2 conserved from the food that we can save. Our current business model is a commission on the transaction through the platform. So we currently take a 10% commission on transaction and we are looking at developing software that we can add into the platform. So we'd be a SaaS enabled marketplace. So we can really add additional benefits to both ends of the users, both at the farm side and the buyer side to help with issues like procurement, um, tracking of materials. And if we can plug in with agritech startups at the, on the farm side, we can then offer help within tracking yield management and really, really help the food supply chain. We are hoping to, to, to get our commission rate up to around 20% by year five by adding in different elements of software and our marketplace. And within the next five years, we're looking at sales of over 100 million, which is under 1% of the total addressable market. So we are currently raising 600,000 um, pounds with our full SEIS allocation. This is to give us a two year runway. Um, so we're looking to switch to a buyer led proposition. So more of a procurement model and to really develop the algorithms and automation, which will help us to, to increase the speed and matching ability of the platform, which will, will really take away a lot of the human element that's involved. We're looking to, to increase our, our headcount by four, uh, a front end developer and a back end developer to help build out the technology and two account executives on the supply side and the, the buyer side of the market who come from within the industry. And we're looking to scale to over 1,000 businesses to really help us to grow the network effects and automation within the platform. My name is Sean. Uh, we are COGS and we see a world where everything grown gets eaten. Thank you very much. Sean, that was uh, really great. Thank you very much indeed. Um, a great example of, of the impact all of the businesses pitching today can have uh, with, uh, with the right support. I can see myself that the questions are flooding in. Uh, John's got a tough job um, in, in just selecting uh, one or two to put to you, but I would encourage everybody to keep them coming and remind everybody that we will be harvesting them all. John, uh, perhaps you could put one or two of these uh, to, uh, to Sean. Over to you. Thanks, Andrew. Yeah, excellent, Sean. Um, there was a question in from David Hansen about the business model, just as you were answering that question. Okay. Um, so other question really um, from Daniel Smart, are there many competing platforms in use already? Yes, I mean, we predominantly compete with the, the more traditional players. So we compete very much with brokers and agents who, who might represent kind of one to two farms or, or one to two food processing companies. Um, what we're really trying to do is to, to digitize that, that kind of very traditional process. There is a company in California called Full Harvest who do, do very similar things. They supply surplus produce to the juicing industry. They've raised, I think, upwards of, of 10 million pounds now. Um, but within Europe, it's, it's predominantly uh, within the surplus produce space, it's predominantly um, agents and brokers we compete with. Thank you. Um, and a question from Gillian Fleming in Cymru, Perthshire, that I know well. How's the uptake of this technology within the traditional farming community developed? Yeah, I know Cymru well too. Lovely place. Um, so we've, we've, we're currently working with over 70 farms in the UK. So that's a, a variety of, of, of all different types of produce. So we've, we've had pretty good uptake in the, in the last year. Uh, some of them are, are very large farms. Um, some of them are cooperative. So the actual number of farms we work with is, is probably upwards of, of 150, 200. Um, because we have some cooperatives who might represent 20 farms who we work with, we work with indirectly. Um, so we, we've had pretty good uptake both on, on things like top fruit, like apples and pears, uh, root vegetables. We're now very much into asparagus season and coming into the British soft fruit. Uh, we've got a really, really strong base um, of farmers. So we've had, we've had very good uptake within the UK. Excellent. And time for one more question. How do you secure future transactions between two parties? that COGS put in contact initially. Why can't they have other transactions without your solution? That's again yeah. from David Hansen. Yeah, 
Great question. Um, so, so one of the things we're looking to do to any marketplace has that challenge, really. So one of the things which, which we are looking to do is to add in software to the platform. So we would work with the processing companies or the manufacturing companies that would we would have a software that would mean that they would be using our platform not just for purchases, but for things like tracking order flow, for tracking in inventory. Um, so they would they would be kind of more inclined to use the platform rather than just as a marketplace where they can they could go beyond us. Also, when we're dealing in the surplus space, um, a lot of this produce is is sometimes it can be just available for a short period of time. So it's the benefit isn't in having a relationship. The benefit is knowing that that produce is available at the right time for the right buyer, and that problem is solved with liquidity. So you need a higher volume because the same person isn't going to need the same produce at, at the same time as the supply is available. Um, so that's where we, we've seen the matching become very important. Super, thanks a lot, Sean.